No matter what, no matter what, I'm going to have, I'm going to live a life of no matter what. Here is the text, Daniel 3, 16 and 17. O King Nebuchadnezzar, we do not need to defend ourselves before this matter. <laughs> Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they are saying to the king of Nebuchadnezzar, look, we don't have to defend ourselves concerning this matter. We're going to talk about the matter in a minute. The 17th verse says this, says, if we are thrown into the furnace, the God we serve is going to save us and going to rescue us. My God, what a word. What's going on here? Here we have Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon. Babylon has now gone in and captured Israel, taking them into captivity. They have uh, what some uh, theologians say is the talented 10. Uh, they take Daniel, uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and they uh, bring them close to the king so the king can make them a, an example of being co-opted. Uh, we find early in the book of Daniel, uh, the second chapter or so, that they refuse to eat from the king's table. Now, this is key because this empowers their faith. And that's what we're going to talk about. The faith that they have does not just start when they go in the lion's den or in the furnace. The faith that they have start with their committed life and they refuse to eat from the king's table and they still hold on to their identity. Now, now. Here it is. They have what I call a no matter what disposition and attitude. What does that mean? And how do how would I acquire that in the crisis moment that we find ourselves in? And not just for this moment, but for our living, but for our living, because I don't want to just talk about an election or what have you. You need to understand how do I live my life in a no matter what way? The first thing you have to do is your faith must have feet on it. Your faith must have feet on it. Let's go back to the text. Now, we know that this king who has a thin veneer attitude or ego, I should say, and he had uh, then uh, created and uh, constructed an image uh, that he wanted everybody to bow down to as soon as the music was played. Now, it reminds me very much of when people get so focused in on uh, the awesome uh, Star Spangled Banner about our uh, awesome country. Uh, but the, the freedom that we have is that uh, we can respond to it the way we feel like we need to respond to it. Uh, and uh, this king, Thin Veneer, says, look, when you hear this flute, when you hear the lyre, when you hear the organ, bow, baby. And what did they do? Their response was, mm, not so much. Not That ain't my Star Spangled Banner. I'm not bowing. Their faith had feet on it. There is a time when your faith must have some action to it. It's more than a talk. It's some action. Here's the second thing. They had fearless faith. When you have a no matter what, a no matter what attitude and disposition about your walk with God, you must have fearless faith. Now, I want you to notice something, what they said. We will not defend ourselves against this matter. One of the most difficult things there is to do is not defend yourself. Somebody punch you in the face and you don't respond, that's hard. Somebody say something about you and you don't respond, that is hard. I have found as being a pastor uh, in a blessed church, large church in the community, you better get some thick skin because folk are always going to be coming at you saying one thing or another, and you cannot get caught up into defending yourself all the time, chasing lies, trying to say, oh, no, that's not true. At some point, you have to do, uh, you have to say, this battle is not mine. God, you got this. I, I cannot get so preoccupied with the enemy coming at me that I always got my dukes up. At some point, I've got to live my life and stop chasing down and stop defending myself. That is very difficult because we have a natural tendency to want to defend ourselves. But they said, look, King, look, go ahead and do what you're going to do because we are fearless. We have a fearless faith 
and we will not, we will not feel like we have to defend ourselves. What's the third thing? You got to have faith in a furnace. You got to have faith in a furnace. Well, look at here. Their faith had feet on it. They were fearless, but they still ended up in the furnace. Now, we got to understand something. The thing I need you to grab more than anything else, Jesus doesn't show up until they're in the furnace. <laughs> That's right. Jesus doesn't show up before the furnace. Jesus shows up in the furnace. You can't get rescued until you need to be rescued. You cannot uh, be defended until there's something to defend you from. What do you mean, Bishop? Uh, this is what I'm saying. You don't have faith, baby, until you trust in God. Till the lights are turned off, when the gas needle is on E, when the, the, the diagnosis is not good, when the spouse leaves, when the significant other breaks your heart, that's when you got faith, baby. When you're in the furnace, everybody can talk a game until it's time to play. Everybody can run their mouth until it's time to get into it. We don't know that you have faith until you're in the furnace. Until you're in the furnace. And guess what? That's the time Jesus shows up. Not before. Not before. So don't know what you're dealing with, what going through, whatever. But wait until you get into the furnace and they slam the door shut. <laughs> Bishop, now can't you have some more comforting words than that? When they slam the door shut, trust me. What did Nebuchadnezzar say? Didn't we throw three in there? I see a fourth who looks like the son of God. Gotta be Jesus in there. <laughs> so you gotta understand, when you're going through, it's, it's not until... You're going through that Jesus comes to take you through. What's your takeaway this morning? Your takeaway is this. You want to live next level faith? Then you got to have a no matter what attitude because God's got you and he has us. The Lord be with you today. May his face shine upon you. Give you peace. I'll see you tomorrow morning with an election edition of Morning Manor. God's got us. God bless you. Share the manna to one other person by now.